say the majority of what we've focused on has been plant touching across cultivation and you know manufactured brands. Um, a little bit on the retail side, not as much on the retail side. We have done a little bit in the ancillary, so you know we kind of want to diversify a little bit more into that area. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today we're speaking to the founding partners at Big Rock Partners, a strategic advisory firm located in Northern California. We're here with Scott Williamson and Joy Sinali, and they're in their offices in, are you in San Francisco? That's correct. Well, welcome to the MJ Bulls podcast. Thanks for having us. This will be an interesting interview for us today because you guys are sort of in between the cannabis companies that are raising capital and the investors that want to invest in the cannabis industry. Can you tell us a little bit more about Big Rock Partners to kind of get this thing started? Sure thing. So Big Rock Partners was founded by a group of folks that came from a bunch of different industries and pretty much all of us had some inroads into cannabis in in some way, shape or form. And so what we do is we're a strategic advisory firm that helps companies and investors sort of come together at the focus of food, hospitality and cannabis. Many years ago, Big Rock was formed as a family office and was really focused on hospitality and sort of food media area. And then certain cannabis investments started to come into play. And basically, we've evolved the organization to be a partnership because we've had a huge number of accredited investors and family offices kind of knocking on the door to gain access to Angel Seed Stage Series A companies in the cannabis space. So we provide kind of a diligent funnel for those investors to take a look at what we feel are some of the best brands mostly in Northern California, but across California at large. Okay. And so like if there were a high net worth individual or a family office that wanted to get into cannabis, they would reach out to a company like yours directly and then you take it from there? Yes. Yes. Uh, We have a lot of great inbounds and uh, we're pretty diligent about that communication. So in terms of diligence process, it goes both ways, looking to make sure that the investor is accredited and sort of shares our our value suite. And then similarly with brands that we work with as well. Okay. What are the things that cannabis companies right now that are raising money should be doing to get groups like yours attention? Yeah. Well, I'm going to put it into a couple different buckets. First and foremost, on the on the diligence piece, there have been some transitions in California. The, the legal market rolling out as of January 1st, and then a lot of substantive changes taking place on July the 1st. Companies are, in some cases, having to transition from the former method um, that businesses organized, which was through either a nonprofit or a mutual benefit, not-for-profit corporation. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing a lot of transitions on the actual formation into operating companies. And in some cases, a company is three different entities, a a hold co with a couple different um, actual operating companies underneath it. So we really look at how are they creating a, a proper investment vehicle that is appropriate um, and that you know you can not only put money into, but you can get money out of eventually. So that, that diligence piece is one of the first important areas. Um, the second is obviously revenues and are they trending in the market? Do they have something special? And that would you know come into sales and distribution, stability, and also do they have any sort of secret sauce or IP that's really specialized. And then the third category would be people. We like to work with great teams that have strong networks, have built great SOPs that have surrounded themselves with strong managers and, and a great staff. You're in Northern California, and I know most of your focus is, is in Northern California, but you're pretty much open to just about any cannabis investments right now. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. I would say we lean a bit premium to some of the brands that are going to be a little bit more middle market focused, maybe aren't necessarily aligned with, you know, our appetite. But if you have a really great trending product, it's definitely something that we want to take a look at. Like Um, We have done, I would say the majority of what we've focused on has been plant touching across cultivation and, you know, manufactured brands. Mm -hmm. Um, A little bit on the retail side, not as much on the retail side. We have done a little bit in the ancillary, so, you know, we kind of want to 
diversify a little bit more into that area. You know, we're, we're pretty agnostic. Okay. I'm sure our listeners are going to find that encouraging because I know a lot of a lot of our investors are still skittish about touch anything that touches the plant, so they're they're looking for opportunities outside of that as well. So that's that's interesting. Now, if the company's raising capital, how do they find companies like yours? You're not in the um, help wanted or in the, in the classifieds, I should say. So where do companies identify groups like yours? Well, I think Joyce mentioned it earlier. It's a small-ish network in the Bay Area that's growing. It, it's it's amazing how you know, there's just a few degrees of separation between just about everybody. That will change in time, obviously, as the as the market matures. But right now, it's a lot of word of mouth. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're pretty present at various conferences. We've attended and had speaking roles at New West Summit for the last couple of years. And, you know, we're very engaged with NCIA and uh, California Growers Alliance and uh, California Distribution Association. Myself, one of our other team members who have had, we've worked in operations in cannabis for some time. So we attend a lot of the local San Francisco-based regulatory meetings. You know, we go to Sacramento quite frequently as well. So we try and be really in front of what's happening on the compliance track. So it's a small network in terms of the brands and cannabis industry focus. It's really the investors that deal flow and them sort of finding us definitely kind of comes more word of mouth, so to speak. Okay. That makes sense. Especially where you guys are. It's like you're right, you're right in the hotbed. When a deal comes together and we're in the middle of a deal, these guys want to raise capital, this company's raising capital, you find the investors that want to get involved. Are you involved in that process in, in, in working through the details of the transaction? Yes, definitely. So we have kind of a, a diligence filter. We preview and if we're really interested and it looks like it's the right set of circumstances, then we'll sort of run it through our, I mean, it's not a super fancy algorithm, but <laughs> yeah. we have a process. And basically, in understanding what specific investors' appetites are, whether that be plant touching, early stage, strong growth opportunity, or a specific sector within, you know, any of these sectors, we would then put that information in front of those investors. Well, we've been speaking with Joyce and Scott from Big Rock Partners, and all their information, all of Big Rock's information, and their web and their email addresses will all be on the MJ Bulls website at mjbulls.com. Guys, thanks so much for explaining all this to me. I know it, we, we took our time and went through a lot of a lot of details, but it was, I think this is going to be really helpful for our listeners. Thank you. You're welcome, Dan. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. Good luck. Thank you.